Hi guys, welcome back to OS Stuff, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use and troubleshoot the Ender 5 Plus. Alright, so the first step we're going to take is to take off the bed clips and put the bed in the correct place. Alright, so let's remove this bed clip, which is already taken off because the bed got shifted. Let's take off this bed clip as well. Let's take off this bed clip on the corner. Take off this bed clip. And now, let's finally move the bed where it's supposed to go. So let's take all of our bed clips, which are just normal paper binding clips. And by the way, I would recommend replacing these clips every uh, around every year because they do lose their tension over time. So let's put in the first clip on one side. So now that we got the bed all correctly placed, let's go into settings. And let's go into the leveling settings. And now the printer will start moving. So let's get on to the next step. All right, so after your auto home has completed and you're inside of the leveling menu, you can go back into settings and navigate back with the back button and go into the move menu. And then you can re-auto home after you've gone, if your choice. I'm going to do that since mine has since moved around. Okay, so now that your auto home is finished, you can look at the little settings here in the move. And we have a Y minus, we have a Y plus. So X minus X plus. We can move it around in the X and Y axis using these controls. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are now going to go into the settings and go back into leveling. And of course, if yours is already auto home, it isn't gonna wanna do this, but I was moving the head around. All right, so now that it's back in auto home inside of leveling mode, um, we can now start the leveling process. To start, let's move the head to the far corner of the bed. Now you guys can see where I'm moving it. We're going to put, so we're gonna slide the sheet under the head. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move these screws under the bed and we're gonna move them up. And we're gonna move them up higher in this case so that I start feeling some resistance on this paper. All right, so the amount of resistance that you want is enough to make the paper hard to move, but it's not enough so that you, it's ripping the paper or you can't um, or you can't move the paper at all. So now that we got that location leveled, we can move side. All right, and now that that is moved, you can slide the sheet under again. And as you can see, the sheet moves too easily under without any resistance at all. So now what we're going to do is we're going to again crease. That's perfect. Now there's some resistance. Oh, I use the Y controls. Move all the way to the other side. And we're going to slide that sheet under. All 
And so now that we've checked every location, we can start. We can start trying to. Uh, we, we can start trying to make sure um, that the middle is just as level. Because now that we've changed all the locations, there could be some wobbly spots on the bed. So let's check. We're gonna go over here, and we're going to slide it under. All right, now we've checked all locations, we can do the, we can finally start the next step of preparing the print. All right, so after we've now leveled, we can go back into the settings and trust me, this is the last auto home we're gonna do. Back into leveling and it will auto home one more time. And this time it's not because we're leveling, it's because we need to get the head out of the way. Now that we have auto homed, we can start the next boxes. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need some 70% Isabel alcohol, and you're gonna need a microfiber cloth. This is made in a microfiber. This is actually a glasses case, but these are microfiber cases. So let's now start by uh, putting a little bit of alcohol. Now in my last 3D printer video, I poured way too much alcohol on the microfiber cloth, play clip there. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're going to just pour just, just a tad bit of alcohol on the napkin like so, right? And now we're gonna rub it on the surface. We're gonna hold the bed in place softly. Don't like, don't force the bed and don't like rub it so that you're damaging it. Now this alcohol is going to help with adhesion and it's also going to help remove marks on the bed. And then we're gonna, and you by the way you can remove these little plastic things with your hand. They're not very not very hard to remove. There you go. This, how doing this is going to make your prints stick miles better than they used to. All right, so after your bed is, is done with the alcohol rubbing, now it's time to move on to the next step. All right, so before we start doing the print, doing the print file, we need to load the filament. Now I've already loaded my filament and since this thing takes like basically an hour to load up any filament, we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to show you. And it's not really just, it's not really hard. So you're gonna go into settings and you're going to refuel. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically spam the feed button every second while shoving the white, the white filament up this little area. Whoa, 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 fellow viewer. Hold on before you continue by spamming that button. That unit measurement actually does something. By changing the unit of measurement, you can actually make it so that the timer will last longer, which means that if you set it to 100, or maybe even 200, that means it'll put two, it will feed 200 millimeters of filament before stopping. So don't, don't spam that button. Now, before you start loading, this is where the motors are, by the way, you're going to have to push it through this filament detector, which is very handy. And to do that, you're gonna to need to cut a diagonal line across the filament and push it up there and make it straight. And after you've done that, you're gonna you're gonna uh, hold down on this little rod right here, and you're gonna push the filament to these little circles, and then you're gonna start pressing the feed button. The feed button will very slowly move into the head. And once you start seeing strings come out of this head, well then you're done. Now you are uh, re ready to start printing. So it's not it's not very hard, but it just takes a little time to move the feet, to feed the filament through, and you also got to be patient to move it straight. 
Okay, now that we've done all of this, we can finally start doing the file. All right, so let's pull up our file inside of Prusa Slicer. We're gonna open up the program. And then we're going to go to file. We're gonna go to import, and then we're gonna select uh, import STL OBJ slash AMF, and we're gonna click that. And then we're gonna go to our downloads. We're gonna click our STL file. It's gonna load it. And then we're gonna, we're gonna drag this to the side. And then after that, we're going to go to our printer settings and we're gonna make sure that we have the correct uh, parameters for our bed and print height. So our bed is gonna be 350 by 350 and our bed max print height should be 400 millimeters. And if that's all correct, we're gonna go back and we're going to press slice now. All right, so now that it's loaded, we're going to press export G code. And it's going to say, all right, where do you want to export your G code? So let's delete this name and select it, our file name as holder two. And real quick, let me go get Or as a micro SD card. Now you may have to use a converter to turn the micro SD into a USB A, but for me, I already have a, a reader built in. We're going to snap it in. It's going to notice that it's there. Click the SD, press save, and I do already have one in there, but you guys aren't. But we're going to replace our old one. And it's going to export and it's done. So now that this is all finished, we can finally start printing it out. All right, so now that we've finally done everything we need to start printing, let's insert our micro SD card. For some reason, this one wants you to do it upside down. Um, and then we're going to go to the print. We're going to select holder two. We're going to press the print button and we're going to go to adjust. Now we're gonna do these, these few checks. We're gonna set the print speed. We're gonna set it to 130, right? We're gonna set the nozzle temp to 60. Or sorry, not, not, not 60, um, 200. The nozzle temp, the hot bed temp is gonna be 60. The Z axis compensation is gonna be three, or minus, sorry, minus three. But this, this is the one that gets a little tricky. Depending on how you've leveled or, or what level you have put your your sliders at, you may want to make the z-axis compensation a little bit different. In this case, it's minus 3.0. But you can adjust this and and figure out which which number works best for you and which one sticks to the bed. So now that we've got all this done, we can press the back button and we can wait for it to heat up. All right, so after the heating process is finished and the auto home has been uh, completed, the, it will start printing. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope some of these tips helped you use your Ender 5 Plus. Because it's definitely not the easiest printer to use, but it's definitely much more versatile and powerful than something like a Flash Forge printer. So anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.